Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT session on alternative internet connections. Today we're going to be talking about cellular internet connections, WiMAX internet connections, and then we will conclude with satellite internet connections. We have a fair amount of information to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. And of course we're going to begin by talking about cellular internet connections. So let's start by talking about the evolution of cellular networking. Now, cellular communication has been around for a while, and it started off with what is now called 1G cellular, and it was only capable of voice transmission. The first type of data communication beyond voice occurred with the implementation of second generation cellular, and that added simple data transmission capability, specifically text. We didn't have a true connection to the internet until the implementation of 3G, or third generation cellular. And it was pretty basic. It wasn't exactly fast, but it wasn't exactly slow. It was just kind of there. One of the versions of 3G networking that you need to know about is HSPA+ which stands for Evolved High Speed Packet Access. And it was a stopgap measure between 3G and 4G. It has download speeds of 3 to 4 megabits per second with an upload speed of 1 to 2 megabits per second, depending upon how far away you are from the cell tower. And then along comes 4G. Well, 4G is still an emerging technology. It currently consists of LTE and WiMAX. LTE stands for Long Term Evolution, and it uses an all IP based core with high data rates, well, at least reasonably high. It is compatible with 3G, so it is backward compatible, and it is compatible with WiMAX. And LTE has download speeds of 7 to 12 megabits per second with upload speeds of 3 to 5 megabits per second, a whole lot faster than HSPA+, but still not as fast as a wired connection to the internet. Now some of the things that you need to consider about cellular networking is first off, cellular connections can be intercepted. They are susceptible to a man in the middle attack. That's because you're transmitting and receiving from cell towers to your cell phone and anybody with the proper equipment can intercept those packets. They may not be able to read them, but they can be intercepted. Also, using the cellular system for internet access usually involves having to purchase an additional data plan. Now this adds an additional cost to owning a cell phone. Also be aware that it can be easy to exceed data plan limits therefore costing you even more money. Now let's move on to WiMAX Internet Connections. WiMAX actually stands for Worldwide Interoperability for Microwave Access. Now this is a technology that uses microwave transmissions for networking. The microwave stations must have a line of sight between them in order for the connections to be made. It is usually deployed at the metropolitan area network, the MAN level, not at the wide area network level, or at the local area network level, LAN. You won't really find WiMAX at the LAN or the WAN, but you will find it at the MAN level. It was initially developed as a last mile alternative for situations where DSL or cable were not available. It offers download speeds of 5 to 6 megabits per second with upload speeds of 2 to 3 megabits per second, so fairly comparable with LTE. Many municipalities are currently exploring the possibility of developing their WiMAX coverage to offer free or inexpensive internet connections for their citizens. Now, WiMAX is semi-compatible with cellular networking. It's often considered a type of 4G connection. As a matter of fact, it's usually classified with LTE. And WiMAX is compatible with LTE. However, it is not compatible with second generation or 3G cellular networking. Now let's move on to satellite internet connections. 
Now, satellite internet connections use microwave transmissions for an over-the-air method to transmit voice and data. This can be an effective means of extending network coverage into hard-to-reach places where other methods of connecting to the internet are not cost-effective. It uses microwave radio relays as its method of transmitting voice and data through the atmosphere. Just like with WiMAX, the relay stations must have a line of sight between them. Now, satellite internet connections use communication satellites to form part of the microwave relay network. The satellites are placed in known geostationary orbits. That means they orbit over the same place all the time. And the terrestrial microwave dishes are pointed at the satellites. This satisfies the line of sight requirements for microwave transmissions. Now, satellite connections can be affected by poor weather conditions, particularly when there's high moisture content in the air. So during heavy rainstorms or snowstorms, your satellite service may be interrupted. Satellite connections also tend to suffer from high latency issues. That means that there's a lag. The signal needs to travel from the terrestrial satellite dish up to the satellite, which is typically over 22,000 miles above the Earth, and then back down to its destination. If you receive the response, then you have it coming back in the reverse order, and that's why there tends to be a latency issue. But if your only option is satellite or nothing, guess what? Satellite works awesome. Now that concludes this session on alternative internet connections. We talked about cellular internet connections. Then we moved on to WiMAX internet connections. And we concluded with a brief discussion on satellite internet connections. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session. And I'm looking forward to doing another one.